you know, I have to ask you this um, because of the bridge. It was a huge success, and I think your character and the one that um, Sophie Grebel played are kind of role models. What do you think? I've heard it before, and when, when I get especially happy is when people say, you are feministic role models. That uh, makes me very happy. Do you think that um, the worldwide recognition of Greta Thunberg is also happening maybe because of your character? Oh, that I never we thought... That accepted maybe more? Ah, oh, I never thought about that. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. There are lots of haters out there mm. because of her, but I think when you hear uh, autism, maybe it clicks mm. and you say, okay, we know the character mm. and we can accept that. Yeah, yeah, I hope. I mean, I've been in contact with a lot of people who has Asperger's syndrome and uh, I think this character of uh, Saga Nguyen has made a big change for them, that she can be successful even though she has to struggle with her disability. Are you happy with the ending? Yes. Will you be coming back if there is a script, a good script? A good script? I would never resist a good script. Because in my mind I thought um, it would be great to mix the storylines from um, Lund and your character and put them all together because the ending of um, Lund was not so good. She just left in a plane and it's open-ended. Mm -hmm. But we know that maybe your character could come back. Yeah, she can come back. In theory, she can. But I've sold the porch uh, <laughs> already, oh. so, so she would come back in another vehicle. Coming now to Mystery Road. Um, in the IMDb, your character is named, has a name called Claire Sims, but I think I heard in the series Professor Almquist. What's your character's name? Uh, her name is Sandra Almquist. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we changed it after a while. Yeah. Why do you took the role? Uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to shoot at all. I was supposed to take a break, but then this... Um, uh, offer came and I just said, oh, okay, let's see the film, the first film. And it was so good. And then we saw the second film and it was even better. And then we started seeing the TV series and my husband just said, sorry, Sophia, you have to go. So, uh, and I'm so happy I did because this it was a fantastic experience uh, to meet with uh, the uh, Aboriginal mm -hmm. community up in Broome and to work with them and to work with the Australian team and yeah I mean it was one of my best shooting experience ever. Do you think that you got offered the role maybe because of the bridge? I'm sure I got the role because of the bridge. <laughs> I, I, I'm not naive I think I mean it's amazing what the bridge has done for me because now people around the world know my name and that helps me getting interesting projects. How did you prepare for the role in Australia? I, she's a, an archaeologist, so I was in contact with the, with the Swedish archaeologist. So I went through the script with her and I asked her whether is this likely to happen and so on and so on. And it turned out everything was very well, well written. And then when I went to Australia, I met with a local archaeologist in order to you know have the right use the tools in the right way and so on. So, yeah, and I listened to books and read books and, you know, what I usually do when I go into part. How important is research for you? Um, do, did you get maybe a kind of script with your life as a professor from the script writers? Uh, no, does, no, I, had, I, I made that up myself. But I think research is always helpful because suddenly you can use something out of that. Uh, like it, we ended up using a lot of uh, the hands, uh, the contact between... Because in the script it was written that she had white gloves on. And then it turned out in the research she hasn't. They, they don't use white gloves. And then I started thinking, why does she have white gloves? Yeah, she has eczema. So she, she can't... She's actually allergic to the ground. <laughs> so it's like the, the body is working against her, you know. So for instance, that can be very helpful.
Can you tell me what will happen to your character? I've seen the first two episodes. Yes, I can tell you that she is going to struggle with her ego, her greed and her wanting to do the right thing. She will be in that, mm, she will struggle with that. But we don't see a kind of a love affair, I don't know, between her and Jay Swan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> What do you think of streaming services like Netflix, Amazon? We can see the bridge on Netflix. Um, is it good for cinema or for television that we have streaming services? Yes, I think the world has opened up in a new way and as a creator myself I see that the the uh, it can it changes the way you can think about format about uh, content so I think this makes it makes us all stand our, on our toes in a good way but I'm very pro uh, public TV I think it's a, an important part of society so I really want that to, to stay, but I can see that public TV gets also inspired by other formats, other platforms. So I think it's a good development. Mystery Road is an Australian series. What are the differences between working in Australia and working in Sweden or here in Germany? Um, the, the funny thing is that with actors Uh, and with sets, it's universal. So whether I work in Australia or Malmo or Czech Republic, it's the, the conditions are the same. The, the I mean, it's just a matter of different amount of money involved. That's the the only difference actually, and that affects the set, of course. But the job is always the same. Uh, to, to create a character, to, to meet, take that character to set and to make that character meet other characters. That's the job and tell the story. As you know, in German TV, everything will be dubbed in German. Mm. What do you think of it as an actress, as an artist? Mm, of course, I mean, that's half of the character with a voice and with a... Uh, I, I think that's a shame. And I think it, I would like it more if, it, if things would be subtitles more, of course. But then again, it's quite funny because I met the different women who has made Saga. So it's very like the French one. And I, I don't know if I met the German one, but it's fun to meet them. But still, I think, is it that a big effort to, to read? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think so too, and it's uh, a problem because your voice is yeah. part of you, yeah. and whoever speaks you, he doesn't speak you in that no. moment. No, the, you can hear the soul of the person in the voice. The voice is like the eyes, so so uh, it's a shame you lose some from that. I think. Um, how can we as Europeans break the dominance of American films and cinema? What do you think? Uh, I don't think we should aim to break that dominance. We should just do more of what we want to do. Yeah, but maybe it's because everyone speaks a different language and mm -hmm. I don't know, the market is in America. Everything we see comes from America. And if you speak English, it's maybe easier. Maybe not for an Australian series. Yeah, but what I see is that we use uh, talents from all over the world already, or all over the Western world, to be honest, uh, already. So, I mean, you can look at Chernobyl, that was an international success. It's, it's uh, I mean, Stellan Skarsgård is Swedish, he's British. I mean, it was different, and the director is Swedish. So, uh, uh, there is, I don't sense these borders in our business the way in, in that sense. But of course, America is dominant, but America can never really discuss the, the, the topic of being European. That's something that we can do. But it doesn't really matter in what language we do it, to me. For me also. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about Herder? I read that you are the creator, maybe a scriptwriter, if the IMDb yeah. is correct. Oh, no, I'm not the scriptwriter, I'm not the creator, I'm um, the idea, I, I came up with the idea, I put the team together with, with the actresses, and then um, I, I said to them, take this little treasure and, and run.
Why don't you act in it? Uh, because I had too much else to do and I couldn't take the time to develop and, and do all that process. And also we ended up selling it to a channel that are working very, very fast and, and that's not my, my style. What can you tell me about Atlantic Crossing? Mm, Atlantic Crossing, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch. Uh, it's an untold story about a Swedish princess who uh, was married to the Norwegian crown prince who had to escape to America. Actually, Roosevelt sent a boat, a ship, to, to get her and the children over to America because the king and the crown prince had to be uh, in London. So, she, And she started developing a, a relationship with Roosevelt. She spent a lot of time with him, even lived with him in, in Washington, in, in White House. And then she started working politically and she actually changed the outcome of the Second World War. Did the Sears maybe happen because of the film The King's Choice? Um, yeah, it might, might be. I don't know. But I think it was already in development by then. Because oh, okay. I know they've been working on Atlantic Crossing for seven years. You spoke in German at the beginning and you played Lauren Faber in Der Geteilte Himmel. Yeah. Um, Was it hard for you to speak German? Because I was unsure if it's a phonetic German or do you actually speak German? Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber nicht so gut als Englisch. Und ich, mu mu ich äh, musste ganz viel Hilfe haben, aber es ging. But it's easier for me in English. But I, I used to live in Germany when I was 20. So that by then I spoke very free, but I, if, in order to make a part, I would again were more more content. I would need to practice a little bit more. But I had good help with the director Oliver, so it went well. <laughs>